welcome back to Flourish. We're so glad that you're here with us today. You may notice that we're in a different setting. Everything looks different here. We're in a beautiful room, and we'll explain that to you in a moment. But first of all, um, as we're talking about family this season, you know, I think of myself as a follower of Christ and a mom of six kids and a grandmother or a noni, as they call me, to 14 grandchildren. And one of my favorite verses is 3 John 1, 4, which says, there is no greater joy than knowing that our children are walking in the truth. Oh, and that is our prayer, isn't it, Tom? Right. That our kids and our grandkids would walk in the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what? That to, to obtain that joy, to see our kids walking in the truth of Jesus, doesn't just happen naturally. It takes intentionality. We have to teach and train our children about Jesus and how to walk with Him. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And we have two very special guests joining us to talk about this topic. And also my husband, Tom, welcome back, sweetie. Great to be here. Thank you. Honored. <laughs> yes. And then we have Ann Graham Lotz with us and Rachel Ruth Lotz Wright. A lot of words there. Tom, why don't you start and tell us who, who yeah, Ann is. Tell us about her. We are honored to have Ann Graham Lotz with us today. Um, her father, Billy, preached around the world. He's preached the gospel to more people probably in, in history than anyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, Anne is, uh, loves to share God's word. She is, uh, has three children, three grandchildren, was married to Danny for years and years, and he went to be with the Lord, I think it was seven years ago. Is right. that right? Yeah, yeah. He graduated to heaven. Mm -hmm. She's written 20 books. Uh, she's founded Angel Ministries, and she has shared the gospel around the yeah. world, just like her father. <laughs> and she was called the best preacher in the family. <laughs> and uh, also, um, I think her message of bringing revival to the church and a clear, consistent message of the need for Jesus as Savior has really defined her mm -hmm. ministry. And so we're we're honored to have her with That's us right. today. And a very good friend. We're That's honored. right. Yes. So glad to be here, Tom. And I'll you. You add just a little thing. You said earlier that um, my daddy's programs are being beamed into Iran That's right now. That's right. So how special yeah. is that? It, it is. It, it is. is. And you know what? For me, your father was the first one I ever heard the gospel from. I was religious. I feared God. But I didn't know Jesus. And I heard him on television one night. It was crystal clear, mm -hmm. and I came to faith in Christ. So I so hope many of these ladies will watch. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. You're my daddy. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> and you know, here you are all the way in Iran, but I bet many of you have heard the name of Philly Graham, a man that loves God, is with Jesus now, and has influenced all of our lives in one way or another, but especially you two as daughter and granddaughter. So we also have Rachel Ruth Lotz with us, Anne's youngest child, three kids, a son and two daughters, and Rachel Ruth is the youngest. And Rachel Ruth, I love that you are in ministry with your mom, as is your sister, Maro. Um, but you had the privilege, one, of writing your first book together, yeah. the topic that we're talking about today, and that is passing our faith on to Jesus, or, or passing our face of Jesus onto our children. Let me get that right. Jesus followers. And what's the subtitle of that book? Just igniting, igniting. real life lessons to ignite faith in the next generation. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I love that visual, igniting faith. Ooh, that's just, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. But a just like you said, we have to be intentional. Yeah. That's right. It has to yeah. be something you can't take for granted. Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. And we have to spur one another on on that, which yeah. is what we are yeah. doing today. Yeah. We're going to encourage you mm -hmm. on how you can do the same thing as Anne has done. But back to Rachel Ruth. You know, the beautiful thing about you, Rachel Ruth, I love that you have an online Bible study that yeah. goes all over the world. Mm -hmm. And how many people? Thousands of people? Probably 10,000. Oh, wow. So that... Yeah. That is amazing. It is. Only the Lord could do that. So we're excited. And I'm just, I love being able to teach them and hear from them and see their light bulbs go on. They get so excited about studying God's word and um, from all over the world. I feel like it's a picture of heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, Every yeah. tongue, tribe, and nation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, and are you a part of that study too? No, yeah. I'm not. No, I get to uh, get briefed a couple of days before, so I know something what the message is, and I certainly pray for her, but, mm. but she handles it herself, and it's just phenomenal. Wow. It's very exciting. They come from uh, all over, from wow. Russia, from um, Ireland, from oh. Brussels, from 
Australia, the lady in Australia wow. gets up at four in the morning. Oh, oh. my oh. gosh. Get it. Azerbaijan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And, wow. Um, down in uh, South America, mm-hmm. as well as all over this country. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that right there, I love what you said that, no, you're not necessarily a part of this in pr- mm-hmm. preparation because that's a picture of what we're talking about today. You it have is. passed your yes. faith yes. onto yes. you, Rachel Ruth. Mm-hmm. You've embraced Jesus for yourself. Mm-hmm. You're not a grandchild of Jesus. Right. <laughs> you're a child yeah. of yeah. Jesus. He doesn't have any grandchildren. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, that is our topic today. How do we ignite faith in our children? And so um, before we jump into our conversation, again, I mentioned we're in a different set. So Rachel Ruth, you had, um, Rachel Ruth's a walking miracle. She Tell is. us about what recently happened to you. Um, first of all, let me, let me quote that verse from Isaiah that we're all familiar with. It says that no weapon form against us shall prosper. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean those arrows don't mm-hmm. you know, prick in through mm-hmm. our armor. But that arrow that touched your life did not prosper. Tell us about what happened to you. Well, it was about seven weeks ago, and this is actually one of the first things I've done (laughs) since um, this episode. But what happened was I had this uh, kind of a stressful test that they had to do to look at my heart, and, and it didn't go so well. And I ended up having this chest pain for four days and couldn't figure out what it was. I mean, I'm 47. I didn't think it could be anything serious. But on the fourth day, I knew something was wrong with my heart. And I was told to, to call an ambulance and went to the hospital and and then come to find out I've, I was in the middle of having a heart attack. Mm-hmm. and. Um, but it was a different kind of thing. It's called SCAD, which is spontaneous coronary artery dissection. So my artery and my heart just shredded and, mm. and it happens in a very stressful event. Sometimes it can happen that way or uh, they don't really know why, but, um, but it happens to women in their thirties and forties. And, and so mm. uh, we, I got through that first one and ended up having another one, um, on the Monday morning and, and it was a massive heart attack. I almost died. And the Lord, let me tell you, I mean, wow. the Lord brought me back at the very, very last second. And um, in fact, I had prayed. I was like, Lord, take care of my girls. I have three girls. And I prayed that the Lord would just take care of them. And, um, and the Lord just somehow brought me back because I had lost feeling everywhere. Wow. And and um, and so when they took me in to look at my heart through a heart catheterization, they saw that one of my arteries, there was no blood in it at all. Mm-hmm. So you have three in your heart and one of them was not functioning. It was shredded. And, and so somehow the Lord kept me alive. That's and amazing. so it is, it's such a miracle. And, and he, I just thank him so much. There's so many other things about that story, mm-hmm. but just very faithful. His timing is perfect. And so when you're in the worst of circumstances, when you're at death's door, mm. the scariest part in your life, God is there and he can pull you through, take mm. care of you, do unbelievable supernatural things to save you in those situations. So he's trustworthy. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And maybe some of you out there are struggling with a life circumstance right now that yep. feels so overwhelming, so over your head, like Rachel, so yet Rachel Ruth, so young and yet having this massive heart Sorry. attack that just doesn't make sense. Um, now that Jesus is there with you, just as he had performed a miracle in your life, he wants to do the same for you. But again, we're in a different spot because Anne and Rachel Ruth were going to fly out to where we live to yeah. film all together. But then all of this happened. Um, yeah. And the timing of this, Anne and Rachel Ruth, you had not finished your book that long ago. Right. Um, do you feel like this, Anne, was an attack from the enemy? I think it was um, his response to the yeah. book coming out because the book has done very well. It is. And so the book, uh, I wish that you could get it, but uh, introduce it from Scripture, each section from Scripture, but then Rachel Ruth uses stories mm. to make the point mm. that I was trying to make from the Scripture. And it's done very well, and people have loved it. Mm-hmm. And I think um, we just encroached on the enemy's territory because the That's enemy right. of our souls, who is Satan, the devil, the old dragon, whatever you want to call him, he's after your children, mm-hmm. uh, especially the children of believers. Yes. And um, so we have to stand against him, right. and we can. Um, and I think this book, you know, um, just was a threat to him, and is still a threat to him. And I, right. I believe what happened to her was um, his response. Mm-hmm. But God is greater. Yeah. So That's the right. one Amen. in us is greater mm-hmm. than the one That's who right. is um, out mm-hmm. there trying to uh, kill, steal, and destroy. 
So, mm. Amen. Amen. And then Jesus gives us life abundantly. And here you are to talk about the importance of teaching our children about Jesus. Tom, you want to ask a question? Yeah. So, so this series is called God's Masterpiece, Satan's Target. And boy, did we ever mm, see right. that in our, all of our lives here. And so, Anne, I have a question for you. One of our favorite verses mm -hmm. and one of the most recited verses in the history of the world is Deuter from Deuteronomy 6. Hear, O Israel, That's right. the Lord our God, <clears throat> the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And then it goes on and says, teach them, teach this to your children as you uh, walk along the road, as you lie down, when you get up. And, and so it's practical. It's not just, okay, learn this yourself. Mm -hmm practical ways even on how to pass it pass it on the spirit of god's given us hints how did you do that with your children you know i think just what that passage says mm -hmm. first of all i have to love the lord my god with mm -hmm. all my heart soul strength mm -hmm. and mind and and i have to devote myself to it so it's not yeah. just something i do in a in a church service or a small right. group or you know it's it's something that's uh, is 24 hours a day seven days a week mm -hmm. so i'm mm -hmm. i'm loving the lord and growing in my relationship yeah. And then the children, my children, see that as we walk along the road, as they go to school, you know, as they come back, if uh, we go out to the grocery store, wh whatever we're doing, mm -hmm. I think the um, most important thing that we can do for our children is to to be a follower of Jesus That's ourselves. Right. Yeah. You know, so that if they see us following Jesus, That's right. then then our children will want to follow Him, mm -hmm. and it's faith and love for Jesus is contagious. Mm -hmm. you know? So. That's right. um, so as they see us um, reading our Bibles, if, if, and I don't know how that's available for you, but for my children, for, for me, let me just say from, from my parents, I would catch my mother on her knees mm. in prayer at night. Yes. I'd go down in the morning to her room. I would catch her at her desk reading her Bible. Mm. Every morning she gathered everybody that was in the home, and, and we would she would read Scripture, and she would pray for us uh, every morning before I went to school. So I saw that mm -hmm. in her. My mother... If I can put it this way, she was just in love with Jesus. Mm -hmm. It yes. just permeated her life, and she was full of fun. She yeah. was very uh, witty and um, and and smart, but she she had that deep relationship yeah. with him, and uh, and so I saw that. And then my father, I think he modeled a commitment to the gospel, mm -hmm. and he did that not just from a platform, mm -hmm. but one on one. Um, he was always available when mm -hmm. I would go back to his study and. Um, so he was, uh, and very affectionate, my father was. Um, so he, he loved us. And, uh, and I'm so thankful because yeah. I know many of us have um, an impression of God the Father from our earthly That's fathers. That's right. Which, which I just want to tell you, if your earthly yeah. father was abusive, mm -hmm. um, and my father, in a sense, was absentee, but, but this is where I learned who God the Father is. That's I right. right. In my Bible, in mm -hmm. Psalm 27, 10 says, yeah. when your mother and father forsake you, or if they abandon you, or abuse you, it's the Lord Jesus Christ who will take right. you up. You know? Boy, and that so is so true. God is my father. And so I feel like what you asked, is just comes out of a personal mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. that I, I maintain by spending time with the Lord every day in prayer mm -hmm. and Bible reading, and then live it out in the way I live my yeah. life. And my children have seen it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah. the hard, they see it in the hard times. Mm -hmm. God lets yeah. us go yeah. hard times. So just like we can see Rachel Ruth's faith and the beauty of her relationship with the Lord as she came through the heart attack. So they've seen me come through the, yeah. the sudden mm -hmm. death of her father yes. or the death of my mother, her grandmother, mm -hmm. or the death of my father, her grandfather. And they, they, and we've, we've been, robbed we've been uh, had you know difficulties um here and yet they they see that our faith in jesus doesn't waver according mm. to our circumstances in fact bad circumstances makes the faith stronger because yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's wow. when you're pressed Beautiful. towards him you know yeah, yeah. oh gosh and thank you for sa sharing such practical um examples and you know i'm i know that we can look at others and we can see that they appear to be so together we're all wearing our best clothes so we look really nice and put together and it may look appear to you that our lives are perfect but they are not all of us are broken people yeah, that's right. all of us walk through trials and struggles but as ann just said those make us stronger in christ when we cling to him cling to god's word um not to circumstances 
experiences. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, helping each other through them, but really clinging to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you for yeah, answering yeah, that yeah. so beautifully. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rachel, Ruth, a question yes. for you. Okay. You've got three daughters. Yeah. How have you been able to teach them to stay strong in their faith when everything in the world is getting darker, when perhaps their friends are doing things mm -hmm. that they shouldn't be doing, but maybe they're tempted to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. How have you helped your girls to stand for Jesus in the midst of those things? Well, I think it started with my girls. I mean, from the time they were born, I felt such an urgency to share with them about Jesus. And so we, when they were little, all growing up, they're all teenagers. I actually have a 20 year old now, but, um, mm -hmm. But I talked to them about the Lord as much as I could. We would, I would share scripture with them. I'd tell them story, Bible stories. And, and I, I love the Bible. I love to make it exciting. The last thing is it is not boring. <laughs> There's right. nothing about right. God's word that's boring. So I always wanted to make it exciting for them. And, mm -hmm. and I had difficulties growing up because I had girls who were mean to me and I didn't have friends and I was wanting to live for Jesus and no one else was wanting to. And mm -hmm. so I knew what it felt like to be left out, to not be asked mm -hmm. to do anything, not to date, you know, all these hard things. And so then raising three girls to love the Lord, then of course they're gonna be left out because basically almost all the kids around here, they're they're not walking with the Lord. And so mm -hmm. to have to teach my girls to grow up in that kind of environment, but to not waver in their faith was a very mm -hmm. big desire of mine. And mm -hmm. so um, I would tell them about Daniel, who, you know, in the Bible, who didn't compromise mm -hmm. or um, how Elijah's boldness or um, David, how he just loved the Lord and talked to him, shared everything that was on his heart. And so I shared that with the girls and, um, and then it's up to them to choose to follow the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I've seen all right. three of them have given their hearts to Jesus and um, love the Lord. And my oldest now is feeling the tug of the world and, and uh, has a little bit of rebellion. And so it's very difficult when you've raised a child, mm -hmm. raised your kids to love the Lord. And then, but then you just have to give them over to the That's Lord. Right. It's just like sacrificing Isaac. When Abraham sacrificed Isaac, he just had to, you know, let him go. And then the Lord, you know, saved him, praise the Lord. But, um, mm -hmm. but the same thing with our kids, you do what you can to train them, to teach them, to love them, to be that example to them. And then you just let the Lord, you know, go after them yeah. and, and guide them. So Beautiful answer again. And I love what Rachel Ruth said is you do all that you can, yeah. but then you release them to the yeah. Lord That's right. because God has given all of us a free will yeah. and we have a choice yeah. to make. And so friends, as you're listening, first of all, it is never too late, no matter how old your kids are to teach them That's about right. Jesus. Yeah. And as Anne said, it starts with your own walk with the Lord first. Make sure you're loving God, spending time in His Word, modeling that to your kids. Mm -hmm. Then, as Rachel Ruth said, teaching them the truth of God's Scripture. Situation arises in their life, find a verse in Scripture or someone in Scripture that parallels that. So you can use that as an example as you shared and then release them That's to right. Jesus, which we never stop praying for them, do we? That's right. And I think the prayer... It's something yeah. you want to underscore mm -hmm. because yes. you can share God's word with them and you can apply it to That's their lives, right. but, but it's the spirit mm -hmm. of the living God who mm -hmm. works within them because you, you can't change a person, you can't change um, you know, what they're doing, but the spirit of God within can. Yes. And yeah. so, so prayer, we can stir up the spirit of Amen. God within them through our prayers. Right. Amen. So, so important. Yeah. I agree. I feel like as a mom, one of our most important roles is to be the intercessor for our yeah. children, yeah. Yeah. especially when they get older yeah. and they're out of our home yes. and we don't have the same influence in their life. Yeah. Prayer yeah. transcends yeah. it all. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. And That's for right. grandchildren. Yes. You know, oh, boy. You know, yes. For, and for this, I get questions yes. when in this COVID with the lockdown where grandmothers yeah. are, you know, locked away from the grandchildren. The, the children don't want them to come in contact with the grandchildren, but um, but they can pray. That's right. And, uh, so that's right. Um, that's something the Holy Spirit is not bound. Amen. He's not locked down. That's <laughs> right. That is so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we uh, when we think of the church today, and it's different from what it was before. When uh, Here in America, when you think about the church, you think of a building <laughs> above ground. 
but we've been to Iran and there's the underground church and meets in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. might be 10 to 15 praying, being careful. Mm -hmm. Their neighbors don't hear mm -hmm. and, and they get exposed. And then there's the church above the ground mm -hmm. and you're on that today, watching on television. Mm -hmm. This is a church service and we're <laughs> honored to be in your home, mm -hmm. but there are many new believers and in Iran. So for a young mom out there, who's just come to faith in Jesus, and mm -hmm. she's just learning how to walk with him. How should she pass it on to her children? What are some practical things that we can share with her? I don't know the limitations that mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you as a young mom in Iran have. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think the first thing you need to do is grow in your own relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. be reading your Bible, if you can access the scriptures, uh, spend time in prayer. And can I just tell you this? that God loves you mm. and um, he's always known everything, which means you by name have always been on his mind. Right. He's always thinking about you. He carries you in his heart. He's concerned about the things you're concerned mm. about. He loves your children more than you mm. love your children, right. if you can mm. believe that. Yeah, you know, right. um, He gave his own son to die on mm -hmm. the cross, not only to take away your sin and bring you into a personal relationship with him, but but to do the same for your children. So he's he's committed right. to your children. So so I think the first thing, Tom, is just to to wrap our hearts around the Lord Jesus Christ and let mm -hmm. him enfold us in that love relationship. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's the loving relationship. Right. It's not um, a to-do list. Or, yeah. right. And then just pray that your children will see something in you. Maybe they'll ask questions, you know, mom, that bad thing just happened. Why were you nice to that person who was yeah. ugly? Or mm -hmm. why did why were you patient with that person who was so rude? Or why, when you're feeling so sick, how is it that you can get up and serve others? Something, you know, mm -hmm. just, and when they see the difference in you, then you go right ahead and tell them that you have a, a source of peace mm -hmm. and a source of strength, a source of hope and wisdom mm -hmm. that um, comes from God himself that has revealed Amen. it to you through his son Jesus and through scripture. Amen. And uh, so it's maybe simpler sometimes than we mm -hmm. make it out to be. I think mm -hmm. it should be natural. And yeah. that's one thing Rachel Ruth has done with her kids. Um, she's been so mm -hmm. natural in the way she has um, instructed them. And it, it's just an overflow yeah. of her own relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus, yeah. you know, which is a wonderful thing. So you don't have to manipulate yes. it. Or, but I think we have to be intentional. Right. So the right. intentionality yeah is that we're looking for those opportunities mm -hmm. and we're praying exactly. for them and we're uh, sharing scripture with them if, mm -hmm. if you can do that. I, I don't know what the restrictions are, Tom, and I don't want to get somebody into trouble, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I think they probably live in that kind of trouble. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but God is there and he'll be your defender and uh, your redeemer. And one day, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're going home and we're all going to be in heaven together. And that's right. We can rejoice and that's worship right. freely without and any no restrictions, restrictions yeah, at all. That's exactly God. right. Yeah. So, Amen. So pray my, I'm so thankful my three children will be there, yes. I know, and my three yes. grandchildren. Praise God. And I pray yours will be too. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay, Rachel Ruth, what about the woman out there that's listening? Perhaps you're a new follower of Christ, um, but your husband's still Muslim and you are wanting to tell your children about Jesus, how would you encourage that woman? So her husband's still a Muslim, maybe she's brand new in the faith, and she's trying to learn, as you've been talking about so beautifully, she's trying to learn how to live for Jesus and how to model that. But how does she share that with her kids without them saying something to the husband to get them in yeah. trouble. Mm. And I know we're talking cross-culturally yeah. yes. here, so yeah. we don't want to overstep yeah. any bounds, but we want you to know that we recognize there are different scenarios that you're facing yeah. that we're trying to help you walk through. Yeah. I think the thing that comes to my mind is the first thing is pray, pray, pray. <laughs> so just pray mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit will show you, will give you the words, will let you know when to say something or, or maybe your child talks about the blue sky and how pretty it is. And, and then maybe that leads to a conversation about, well, I wonder who created that. You know, let me tell you about the creator of the world. And, mm, good. and so there can be different things that it can come up naturally in conversation. But I think the biggest thing is to be prepared in your heart by praying and asking the Lord mm -hmm. to help you, to guide you, to give mm -hmm. you wisdom, when to speak and when just to show them by example. And and uh, and then also just as much as you can in any scripture you've ever heard, just think about it, meditate on it, and then let the Lord just lead you. Mm -hmm. And 
In fact, I was just talking to my girls earlier mm -hmm. about how we don't have to pre-think something that the Lord says. I think it was to Paul, don't mm -hmm. pre-think when you're arrested, when you go in front of people, yeah. that, mm -hmm. that God will just give you the words to say. And I think the same is with our kids. You know, we don't have to have it all set up like a little Bible study. And God will just give you the words um, at the right time. And so I think be very sensitive to his spirit. So sometimes you feel, we we're talking about that, when your heart starts beating and you faster and you just know the Lord is just burdening your heart to say something, then you just trust That's the right. Lord mm -hmm. to give you the words, trust the Lord to protect you, protect your kids. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we, we know ultimately we want to save our kids from, from hell. And That's so right. we're wanting yeah. to tell them about Jesus and, and he will, I know confidently he will show you and lead you and how and when to do that. And wow. I think, Joanne, if I can insert, mm -hmm. uh, I, you might have said that to Paul, but he also said that in Luke 21, because I was just reading mm. through that when he was telling his disciples, the very end of the age, there'll be so much persecution on mm -hmm. believers. And, and he said not to be afraid when they mm -hmm. drag you up before the authorities, mm -hmm. when they drag you up before That's kings right. and whatever, then the Holy Spirit will give you the words. And then there's a phrase in there that says, and, and this will be for testimony. Mm. And so I made that application for myself because I, I've had some... Um, difficulties some uh, mm. it's almost like the lord has taken his hand away and allowed me to experience some physical mm. suffering mm -hmm. which he's mm. protected me from uh, as well as the suffering when my husband suddenly went to heaven and some other things we've had but but i feel like mm. he's whispered to me that this is for testimony mm. that the way i handle my physical suffering mm. and i just pass that along to you because when you you may be going through hard things mm -hmm. and your children may see you physically suffering or abused by someone, maybe right. your husband abuses you or right. some, but they see the way you handle it and the Lord would allow it. This is for testimony. Yeah. This is the way you show, show them your, the reality of your mm. faith and your yeah. relationship with Jesus. Yeah. So, um, right. yeah, so we just thank the Lord. I, I don't thank him for the pain and the suffering, mm -hmm. but I thank him that it's not wasted. Um, and that's he right. And use it as a testimony. Yeah. Amen. He does use it. Amen. Yeah. He totally does. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it. We could just be talking all day, but we have almost come to a close. But before we finish our program, we want to pray for you. Um, this has been delightful. And Rachel Ruth, thank you for sharing your hearts on how you have passed your faith on. You can see how beautifully it's happened here. And, and next session, we'll get to meet one of Rachel Ruth's daughters. And you can see how that faith has been passed on to three generations, actually longer if we go backwards. Um, but God is faithful. So but let's spend some time in prayer. Anne, Rachel Ruth, Tom, would you close us, please, in prayer? That's right. Good. So Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that we can access mm -hmm. your presence. We can walk right in to the throne room of heaven. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we thank you mm -hmm. for the yes, blood Jesus. of Jesus that's opened that door for us. And we come right now and I bring to you the mothers and the grandmothers who are watching mm -hmm. and listening, yes, Lord. And you know their hearts. You hear their cries. You see their desperation for their children. Would you bend down your ear? Mm -hmm. Would you listen? And then, Lord God, would you um, intervene? Would you reach down mm -hmm. even at this moment would you touch the hearts of children and grandchildren and husbands mm -hmm. and fathers and would you draw them to yourself through the testimony mm -hmm. of the mothers and grandmothers so we just commit them to you yes, thanking you in advance for how you're going to use them and we pray this please in jesus mm -hmm. name and father i just pray for the precious precious children yes. lord of iran and all the kids, I can just see them running on the streets and all the different people they interact with at school or in their neighborhoods, Lord. And, and we don't know all the lies maybe that they're being fed or things that they're hearing from their friends. And so, Father, I just pray a protection mm -hmm. over the kids. I pray that you would guard them, give them sensitivity to understand and know truth when they hear it, Lord, that they would hear your truth and they would receive it in their hearts. And Father, I pray that you would open their hearts to be able to hear it. And Lord, would you um, help them when they're facing so many hard things as teenagers, as young kids, um, with their friends and all the things that they're tempted to do, tempted mm -hmm. to get involved in. And, um, and Lord, I just ask mm -hmm. that you would pursue them. Would you pursue them with your truth and pursue them with your love? And, and would you save many, many children in mm -hmm. Iran for you, Lord, that they would hear the wonderful truth of Jesus, how he's 
died on the cross to save them from their sins. Lord, and I pray that you would open their hearts, that there would be such a revival amongst right. children yes, and Lord. youth yes. in yes. Iran that, that it would just be noticeable. It would be huge, Lord. So we're just asking for your blessing on the children. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord. Mm. And Lord, I just think of the dear, sweet Iranian people and being there a few times, how welcoming they mm -hmm. were and hospitable. Yes, and that comes from you, Lord. They have a heart for God but uh, they're missing out in Jesus, so many of them, it's hard for them to find the gospel or hear it. And thank you for everyone that tuned mm -hmm. in today mm -hmm. to watch this program because they're gonna hear some things that will just change their life. So we know that Paul said, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in our hearts mm -hmm. that he's been raised from the dead, we will be saved. And so, Father, we wanna give that opportunity right now mm -hmm. for anyone yes, watching this program yes, that has never given their life to Jesus. Would you pray this prayer from your heart? Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, yes, yeah. I know that I have sin in my life mm -hmm. and I ask for you to forgive me. Mm -hmm. Jesus, you died on the cross for me. Mm -hmm. Your blood was shed for me, and I give you my life. Mm -hmm. I repent of my sins, mm -hmm. and I confess you as Lord, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Take my life and save me, mm -hmm. and use me, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. I love you so much, mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, friends, thank you for joining us here today. Tom and Rachel Ruth, thank you for being here. And friends, I pray blessings on you now. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. See you next time. Bye now. Bye. <laughs>